Hey, you down here? Okay, well, I didn't make a video while I was doing it because it's the first time I've done this. And uh, I need to concentrate on making sure I did it right. But I did, uh, this is my first coat. I think I'm probably going to want to do another coat. This is a backsplash for a vanity sink kit, bathroom sink. Um, and it was a piece of cultured marble that I had gotten. It was actually some big scraps that a guy I knew. Can't see that too good, can you? A guy I knew uh, got them, picked them up. He used to do some installation on new houses of some actually wire shelving and stuff. And uh, he, uh, and this is gel coat, by the way. It's not paint. It's um, actually this stuff right here. It's, uh, it's commonly used on premium marine grade gel coat. This is called uh, Snow White. It's about, I think about as white as they get, and that's how the sink is that we have. It's real white. So um, it, uh, it's exactly the same chemicals they use, and this is, I can't find it. You have to mix this hardener in there. Exactly the right CCs to. I'm, I actually made, <laughs> I stole some, not Tupperware, but you know, food storage that was exactly, well, I marked two ounces, half of it's two ounces, and full it's four ounces. They say don't mix them on a pint at a time. I mixed eight ounces and sprayed it with my little. It's all took apart, but I have a old. Craftsman spray gun, and I put on a water filter on it to keep water from getting in there yesterday because I've used it for years on and off. And you know, if you get the tank dry, you're out right for a little while, and the next thing you know, it's uh, water mixing in. And when you're not spraying water based paint, that's a problem. Of course, it could be a problem anyway when you get too much. This was my test piece, I tried brushing it, and uh getting them on light <coughs> and it was really it I think I even messed up on the uh, stuck to it I think the, this is the second I sprayed it yesterday just to see you know I wanted to actually I thought I might use it for a kind of a coaster to set my drinks on and stuff but um, it was the, the cut off of this piece the other piece here I made me a little spray booth out of a box and uh, made me a I needed. I wanted to put it up on kind of an angle. I actually suggested that was the way to hold it. I can't. I don't think you can see it too. Anyway, another box. I folded into a triangle. But I taped this box here together to make me a spray booth. And uh, on my workbench, and I tried to protect my workbench. My that I my saw table. I did get a little bit on it down there on the right side of my plastic. That's an old shower curtain, but. See up in here, right behind it, is my toolbox, desk, some old computers, monitors, and all that stuff. And I did not want that spray getting all over that. But with my fan blowing it towards me, <laughs> and it blew it right in, right in my face when I was right here doing this one. I did that last. I, I started out testing on it, and then uh, I saw how the spray pattern was looking. And then I thought, okay, I don't want to waste any more of my small amount of gel coat that I mixed up. It's still just a little, it's not wet, but it, you know, your finger kind of drags on it. It's just a little, not exactly tacky, but not dry either. And it was rather humid yesterday, uh, but it was rather warm too. I'm trying to get my drop light out. They were a couple of little just makes it look kind of yellow I'm trying to see yeah I can still see I can still see I filled it in I didn't know what else to use I wasn't gonna go spend no more money this this, this gel coat cost $27 and some change about $28 and then I had to in order after I brushed it I realized well I I, th I can't you can't see that uh, 
can't see the um, probably I don't know if you can even tell either. Yeah, you might be able to see the air bubble in there that's just clear so when you put it in a syringe you can't even see if it's in there or not and I can't even see it unless it gets I didn't get a very good dollop when I dropped it in to mix it so um, that's the thinner you have to use styrene thinner they say uh, don't use you clean with acetone and they say don't use acetone used to uh, I had to do a bunch of reading a bunch of video watching because I've never done this before I sprayed paint but not not gel coat and uh, anyway um, I ended up getting this styrene thinner it's not the same brand as the Seahawk they wanted you to spend forty four dollars on some thinner from them and this was twenty three dollars and I couldn't find, I, I didn't see a good place, I, I looked around a little bit to get it locally, but I didn't really want to go, I spend five, five or ten bucks of driving around, and this old beast, well actually this old beast has got a leak on the carburetor, so I can't even drive it right now, so, uh, and I don't drive much anymore, so, um, anyway, I ordered it, and, uh, this end got the most and it's the smoothest so I guess spraying it to, I was afraid I was really messing up I wasn't aiming the camera was I uh, it did start to smooth out once I got it thicker and there's something right there that hit it after I was done spraying when I was over here spraying this one I don't think that caused it but I think something in the air really light a piece of grass or something is what it looked like and I thought, I started to try to get it out because, you know, you can do that but with regular paint and then hit it again with the spray cover up where you messed it up. But a couple things. It was a little breezy, which was good to keep me from breathing it. I tried wearing a painter's paper respirator, but I couldn't breathe in that thing. And since I had plenty of outside, I'm really outside, you see, standing right here. So I had all kinds of ventilation. I definitely wouldn't spray that in a closed up building. It's some strong stuff with some bad chemicals. And, uh, but it does dry pretty fast. Uh, I was spraying uh, Varathane on my vanity cabinets. Well, no, I didn't spray it this year. I did. Uh, just brushing it when I was brushing it. That stuff was, it take me about 20, 30 minutes to brush it outside. And man, it started getting to me outside uh, so and it, and it took a lot longer to dry so it would smell up the garage and sometimes it would kind of come into the house even with the back door open and the fan going so uh, and, but you gotta you know the thing is is you gotta balance between keeping stuff you know I mean I got enough stuff on it as it is ventilation and and keeping junk out of it too but uh, it has sort of a texture to it. it. This stuff dries fast and it's hard. Uh, I tried sanding on that. I got back to that. I, um, I mean, it had, I guess you can probably kind of see the textured look to it really seriously. I could say that that's my artistic prowess there, but what it was is I brushed it and it was drying. I, I didn't, I, I couldn't see. I thought, well, I don't think I got anything but air in my in my little syringe. I was using a little syringe, you know, for like allergy shots. I used to take them years and years ago when I had some syringes with. Anyway, um, couldn't see it, and I thought, oh, I didn't get any in there, so I did it again, and then uh, and then uh, it started. It was really drying fast, and it was really hot that day, hotter than yesterday. This was a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, man, I messed up. It's going to just be rubber when it dries. And it took forever to dry, but it did begin to seem to get hard to the fingernail. And then I tried sanding some of it out yesterday. I spent half the day sanding on that thing and messing around with it. I started with 400, and all it did was just kind of make black on it. And I didn't really take anything down. And then I uh, still didn't want to get a rough grid on it, so I thought, well, I'm going to wipe it with acetone. Well, that stuck. I was using a paper towel. It's, it's the paper towel embedded itself in there. And so then I grabbed a sock, and I still couldn't wipe the paper towel out. And it started just dissolving in that stuff, which was surprising because I thought it was, you know, more dry than that. And I didn't think it would do that. 
so then I quit let it dry then I hit it with some 220 sandpaper and kind of knocked some of that blackness off of it which it wouldn't matter if I was going to recoat it but I didn't want any you know debris from the sandpaper left in there and so I didn't uh, I used up the last of what was in the pot on that and it's uh, actually covered remarkably well it was I mean it was thick from brushing it I had it really thick but uh, and this stuff is real when you know when it's uh, before spraying it when it was just the factory coating on it factory gel coat and old been sitting in the garage for years it's uh, very dusty uh, very light fine dust when you sand it and cut it when I cut it it's uh, well, I used. I bought me a wet a diamond blade and used water, the wet blade. Used water, sprayed water on it and just used a circular saw. Worked good, but slow cutting. And uh, I had to do a bunch of research to make sure I knew how to do that too. And uh, I had sanded. Uh, I had another piece in my room that I set under my TV because I had the TV on the dresser and the TV was too big to stay on there, and I put it under there. And I cut the end, well I didn't cut it, I just sanded and buffed it. And it made it shiny. But this is gonna be in the bathroom. And I wanted, and this stuff is really porous. So I wanted uh, it to, um, resist water really well. So I wanted to put the real thing that they put on it and I looked I looked up and looked up until I found out what they use on cultured marble. You know, there's several, three or four, maybe more different kinds of gel coat I found out there. Different formulas, different chemicals that are actually the, what it's made of. And uh, I found the one that is most commonly used on cultured marble. And mostly what I see out there is about fiberglass and boats and, you know, for information and videos especially. But uh, of course, it was helpful on long because when when they make a sink or anything, they they spray it in the mold uh, and then and, uh, and use release agent. Spray the mold with release agent. Spray it in the mold and then they pour the culture marble in there. I found these are some manu videos of, of a manufacturing place company. Saw exactly how they do it. Of course, they had expensive equipment and uh, that makes it really smooth and shiny when the, it sticks to the you know to the material once it dries and pulls off the mold just fine as long as they do it right it's very tricky stuff the whole thing is kind of a tricky process and then uh that makes it really shiny and smooth so i saw a lot of boats that were sprayed and uh this is probably about as good as it's going to get i think spraying it like this it actually looks okay. I mean, you can see from back here, I can see the, uh, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Back here, I can see the texture to it from back here, but it doesn't look bad. It sort of looks like a piece of tile or something, a textured piece of tile. So I think it'll be fine. And it does look like it's gonna be pretty close to the same white as the sink. Close enough, it won't look bad. I almost, could, have, could have used it as it was. It was but uh, then I wouldn't have the protected edges, you know, they would have still been raw and I could have polished them up. In the center, I might have made it, it was yellowed from age, I might have made it more white by just, you know, sanding it some more and polishing it, but I wanted to do the best I could and I, I like learning, so. But it certainly turned into a way bigger deal than I thought. I, I looked up having a piece cut and it was gonna be, you know, 40, 45 for a small piece of $75, $85 to have and I'm not so sure they wouldn't just cut it and polish the edges. I don't think they would put new gel coat on it. So, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, thought about using tile. I actually, still might put tile in front of this at some point. I don't know. But I thought, heck, getting the right thickness out of it because this goes down. See, I actually made a mistake on my sink when I made it. I used to be a cabinet maker in the '80s, but uh, my brain don't work as good anymore as it used to. And uh, this is the right thickness to make this, the vanity. I showed it in another video about, I, I kind of showed it and mentioned it. That goes, um, 
down, there's a roll splash on the sink. That's a little more wet right there. And it goes up about four, it's four inches tall from the top of the sink. So about five, six inches. So it goes, my hand, I'm showing and not, telling and not showing. So anyway, that'll be covered. And then the rest will show. And um, that will get the sink out away from the wall far enough so that there's an overhang on the front because I somehow I measured that thing ten times and still measured got it wrong somehow I made my the depth I was making custom sizes you know there, there actually is no such thing as standard sizes it's just what the industry does it's what they want to make and want to sell you but if you're a custom cabinet maker you make whatever size you want for whatever you need it needs to fit the sink and of course that's what I was trying to do is make it uh, fit in my space and the width and then the depth I wanted it to fit the sink that I was going to get because there's only three or four different sizes of depths and depths of sinks you can get actually there's two three I think anyway uh, I just messed up and uh, somehow had it seven eighths about right at seven eighths off uh, too deep too deep so it wasn't going to be any overhang in the front and I didn't want all that that looked stupid and I didn't want the water dripping on the door all the time off because I you know, I splash. I want to wash my face and all that. So, um, so I've come up with this way to uh, fix my uh, my oops. And uh, kind of hate to have to do another coat, but I probably wouldn't have to. And I'm scared to. Uh, sand on it as much trouble as I had sanding as ugly as it got when I sanded it yesterday. Only thing I got in there that bothers me is that little spot there but actually it's a piece of something and it's kind of blended in. I mean I can feel it and I can still see it. It'd probably be hidden but uh, I, I hate having leaving stuff embedded in my paint or hard gel coat. There's mosquitoes out here this morning. Sun just came up. <clears throat> nice temperature though. But uh, those little holes on the right wood, you can't, I don't think I can get to where they can be seen. But my uh, wood putty didn't. I didn't. I mean, I can't. I couldn't see good enough. And I, I can see now that there's. I don't think those would fill in. This stuff doesn't self-level at, at all. And uh, so, and it doesn't. And they they said it doesn't self-level and it won't fill in holes. So you better fill your holes. So, uh, see if I can get all the finger grease on it I can and then put another coat on it. Oh, that's, no, that little spot there. Yeah, I can see, there were a couple of blemishes in it and uh, I can see them, yeah. Of course, that's down below. So the top part that's about, that top five inches is all it's actually gonna show. I kind of feel like that it, if I put another coat on it, it just might get a little smoother. The thicker spots where I hit it, I was trying to make sure I got the ends, the edges, because that's where I is sanded down, you know, to the bare stuff. That in the very top of it, and it was really hard to uh, get anything. I got to see if I can turn that thing forward because. What I was having to do is lean it back so that it would pick up some because I only mixed, you know, eight ounces. And then spray until it ran out and then lean it back and get it to pick up and then spray. But I didn't want to take it apart and try to turn that while, while that stuff was in there because you've only got five to ten minutes and it's dry. But I had cleaned this up and got it all in good shape last year and I kind of think that that, yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure that threads in. And I probably just thought that's where it ought to be. But actually, when you're spraying, most of the time, you're going to be leaning like that a little bit. You might be straight. I mean, if you're spraying a wall or something, you can be straight. But when, you, when you're low, uh, you know, you can usually get, get it to pick up by leaning, whichever way you're... And I don't know why that tube's made slanted. Maybe that's good. Maybe it gets it down in the bottom of it more. But... Uh, yeah, if, I, if it would have been pointing forward, then I would have been uh, been a lot better off than I could spray it. Like, like you know, yeah. 
like it was. I would, I, at first, I was planning on laying them flat on the back, you know, flat down. That's how, and then I got to thinking, I'll never, this thing won't spread on unless this bu bucket was completely full. So, yeah, here's the little, that's the little, it's plastic, believe it or not, from back in the 70s or 80s. I'm not sure exactly how old this was. I actually, and boy, you better clean it quick with acetone. It'll ruin your stuff. <clears throat> it's, uh, I inherited the spray gun from my friend's dad. When my friend's dad died, my friend didn't, uh, he didn't do anything like that. So, so he gave me some of his tools and stuff. And nuts and bolts and cool stuff like that. That air compressor down there, I don't know if you can see it. It's been, it's, it's wore out twice and I fixed it twice. And I got a tank hooked up to it. It, long, it used to do about 110, 15 pound, pounds, but now it only do about 90, 100 maybe. But uh, bushings wore out in it once. And I've had it for five or eight years now. Bushings wore out in it once. and I put it in the wagon so I could move it around. Get it out from under, <coughs> get it out from under there easy. Put it outside where it's really loud underneath my work, my saw table. That's my saw table I built. I've showed it in other videos. I got a, a Ryobi 10 inch table saw under there. But it's also a great workbench. But I don't want to mess it up. I did get some on there. I can sand that off though. Because I haven't even finished it yet. I want to put some finish on it. I haven't done it yet. But, uh,. I guess I've rambled long enough, but you know that that was just high enough that box there to keep me from spraying over it and around it. I actually planned on putting it all the way in the back, and uh, since I couldn't get any get, come out of the gun, I had to bring it forward. Figured that out with that first one. I had it back there in the back, and uh, I actually had it right in the center, leaning on my leaning box there. But uh, I guess that's enough rambling about this. Would have been really neat to make a video of doing it, but uh, I just thought, I didn't, and I didn't want to get uh, gel coat on my phones either, and I knew I would, so I forgot and wore a pretty new shirt and mess, got some on it. So if I'm going to spray again, I need to change shirts today. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it at all. Well, anyway, that's... Not bad, not a bad little work spot there. I've got so much stuff in here I can't. That whole side is full of my stuff. Um, but I'd prefer to be out, out. I don't. Uh, if it wasn't, you know, for the sun, you can't. You don't want to be in the bright sun. They said do, if you're doing it outside, do it on a cloudy day, which it actually was cloudy. But then, of course, if it rains, it ruins everything. And so that's why I decided I was going to do it out, out and under the shade tree here. After the sun go like this time of the morning, it start. It hadn't come around in yet, but it's beginning to. It's fixing to. Where to go? Can't find the sun. Huh? That's weird. Well, I guess it's the way the camera does. Oh, there it is. I can barely see it. I left there. Anyway, that tree makes it a lot better being working here, but you do get sun. And I was going to get right over in that space around the side of the blazer, but then I thought, well, if it rains and um, it will ruin everything. And plus, found out there was a guy coming to mow the yard, and I didn't know when he was coming, so I had I put it inside of here and I made my little box so that I wouldn't. And it turned out I was kind of afraid I was going to get all this brand new wood over here. I didn't want it getting all over that. That's uh, well, some of that's. From me working where I was using that's just what I used to that's when I cut it that's the board I used as a straight edge see it got that white chalky junk all over it and that's some scraps that I used to, just to lay that small piece on that's an old door I use as a workbench I set it up on saw horses but behind that is brand new plywood and, and some brand new hardwood that I didn't want to get junk all over it and there is some specks on a piece end of it down there so, you know, when you spray, man, stuff goes everywhere. And that fan, yeah, that fan, I'm sure, helped a lot keeping it out of the garage, but it also was blowing it towards me. If it hadn't been for the cardboard, 
it had been right in my face because when I got in that corner and spraying, some of it was billowing up above and it was hit, covered my glasses. I had to go clean my glasses. So, uh, okay. I don't know. I, I guess I'm still too sleepy to realize how long I'm rambling on. All right, this is done, and I just wanted to show that. And before I put another coat on it and everything, and I can see that maybe I can even actually see the difference. All right, bye.